Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is going to be about the Seagate Momentus XT, but not the old Momentus XT. This is the new second generation Momentus XT, although the one I'm holding is the original Momentus XT. And what's significant about this guy, this is the 500 gig drive, is that Slick has actually been using this since near the launch of the drive, and he's very, very happy with the results, which I would fully expect him to be because I've benchmarked this drive. I know it's a fantastic drive, but it's also significant because Slick, along with at least 999,999 other users, has been using a hybrid drive for quite a while now. So over 1 million hybrid drives have been shipped by Seagate at this point in time. So that means it is time for a new generation of Momentus XT drive. So this is the new second generation Momentus XT. This is a 750 gig drive and we're gonna walk you through all the benefits of a hybrid SSD magnetic drive as well as showing you guys some benchmark results of this drive versus a pure SSD as well as versus a 7200 RPM desktop hard drive. Now that's all fine and good. Seagate shipped a million hybrid drives, you know, good for them, all of that stuff. But what's a hybrid drive? So a hybrid drive is a hard drive, mechanical hard drive just like this, spins at 7200 RPM. It's got physical platters inside it, spinning around, read head moves around. It is a tried and tested and true technology. It's been around for a lot of years. However, eventually they will fail due to the mechanical nature of them. And they're not that fast in random reads and writes, that is little tiny files that need to be quickly read or quickly written and those operations are very slow for hard drives because that head has to wait for the disk to spin to the optimal place where it can actually read that bit of data, plus it has to physically move around. You're kind of limited there. Okay, SSDs. So these fix the access time problem because there is nothing moving around. Everything is accessed using software algorithms and these are flash chips. They're extremely durable. In some ways, they're physically extremely durable. However, they have only a limited number of write cycles. So what that means is that you can only rewrite the entire SSD a certain number of times. Now, modern SSDs have a lot of advanced software algor algorithms that preserve the flash for as long as they can, but that still doesn't get around the fact that they'll eventually fail and they are extremely expensive compared to hard drives. So a hybrid drive takes these two technologies and marries them together in a way that is very seamless. So what that means is that we get the benefit of a magnetic drive that is large capacity, and we get the benefit of an SSD that is very fast reads, especially those little random files that are gonna really bog down your system on a hard drive, but don't even make an SSD break a sweat. We also get one other benefit, and that is additional reliability, because what wears out an SSD is writing to it constantly, and we're not gonna do that, because most of our write operations are gonna go to the hard drive, and we're just gonna use that fast, fast read on the hard drive's cache in order to read the data we use the most, and for hard drives, what wears them out is moving the heads around and basically just general use. Well, if we can do a lot of our reading from our most used files off the SSD, then we're gonna wear out our hard drive less. So in a lot of cases, when you take two things and you put them together, you are, in theory, adding more points of failure and you are decreasing the reliability. But in this case, by putting these two technologies together, they complement each other and actually make each other more reliable and faster. So why don't we start this video, since we've talked about the Gen 1 drive, I mean, they both kind of look the same, so you'd never know which one I'm holding up, but I'll tell you, this is the Gen 1 drive. The differences between the Gen 1 drive, actually, I'm gonna keep holding it, and the Gen 2 drive. So the Gen 1 drive had four gigabytes of SLC flash to go with its 500 gigabytes of magnetic storage. That flash was rated at 55 megabytes per second writes and 100 megabytes per second reads. Now, the write spec is not nearly as important with a hybrid drive like this because mostly what the flash will be used for is reading. It's, so it's kind of caching it slowly and then you wanna be able to read it quickly. But 100 megabytes per second is not that fast. It's not that much faster in terms of sequential performance than the magnetic storage itself, although it's much faster for random performance. Now. The new drive, the flash is rated at 100 megabytes per second writes, so that means it writes as fast as the old one reads, and the SLC flash is rated at 170 megabytes per second reads, so it is significantly faster, and in addition to that, instead of being four gigs, it is eight gigs, which means we've doubled the cache, and we've also increased the ratio of cache to magnetic storage 
quite significantly. Now, one of the, uh, or two of the other major differences are that the old drive is a SATA 2 3 gigabit per second drive, and the new drive is a SATA 3 6 gigabit per second drive, although that's probably not going to make too much of a difference in a real world scenario. But the other one, and you're going to see this manifest in our benchmarks a little bit later, is that the new drive includes what's called fast factor boot, which means that as soon as you boot this drive up on your system, it will cache the OS files permanently into the SSD cache and then it will not remove them. So what that means is even if you boot up the drive and use it for a long time and do a bunch of other stuff and it caches your programs and your frequently used applications into the SSD, you can still shut it down and boot it back up and it'll boot up almost as fast as an SSD because it won't remove those files from the cache. Now this is gonna be a bit of a summary of the key benefits of the Momentus XT. So it's affordably fast, which means you get much larger capacity. We're talking almost an order of magnitude larger capacity than an SSD in a similar price point. And you get significantly lower cost. So you get that cost, that price point, and then also speed. So it's not gonna be as fast as an SSD. That's just the honest truth. However, it'll boot almost as fast as an SSD. It'll do certain things almost as fast as an SSD, but it's still not an SSD. It's completely invisible to the end user. So unlike solutions like Intel SRT or some of the hybrid drive solutions where you have like a dock that you plug the two drives into and there's like some software logic on it, it is completely invisible to the end user. So with the Intel solution, you manually configure your RAID controller and you set this up to cache this drive. And that does give you some additional flexibility. You're not tied into buying just one drive, but there are some disadvantages as well. So it's a bit of a bear to set up depending on the motherboard you're using and it's inherently less reliable. So if there's some data that's been written to the SSD and there's a sudden power outage or something like that, there is a chance that you'll lose your data. The Momentus XT being a completely integrated unit will actually back up your data to the drive before the power goes out to the drive itself and it will save you a lot of headache potentially that way because remember, your OS can get corrupted by an act like that. It'll also increase your battery life compared to a normal conventional hard drive because the SSD costs almost nothing in terms of power consumption, but it saves you power consumption because if the drive can be active and moving around, moving the drive heads less, then it will actually help. I mean, we're talking like a couple minutes per charge here, guys, but it will save you battery life. The reliability factor is terrific. I'd say in a notebook, it's not going to be as good as an SSD because part of the notebook user pattern is that you throw the thing around or you put it down hard or it's in a backpack or whatever else. An SSD is still the ultimate in terms of reliability, but since you're putting less wear and tear on the drive components themselves, it's going to be better than a traditional hard drive. Now guys, we're ready to talk results. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the comparison between the new Momentus XT 750 gig, the one terabyte desktop drive. Bear in mind, this is the latest one terabyte drive using a one terabyte platter. So that's about as high performance as it gets due to the density of the data on that hard disk, as well as the pure SSD. So on its first boot, the Momentus XT 750 gig scores 2,700 points in PC Mark Vantage in the hard drive suite. That is yeah, just terrible compared to the three and a half inch one terabyte drive. This is to be expected. Two and a half terabyte drives have a huge disadvantage due to the size of their platters because when something's spinning at 7200 RPM, the outside edges of it are obviously spinning in some ways, depending how you measure it, much faster than the inside edges. So a larger disk, that is the kind you find in a three and a half inch drive, has an inherent advantage in terms of the sequential reads and sequential writes. This is as expected. However, on the second boot, already the second boot, this is all we've used this drive for, is these three runs of PC Mark Vantage. It actually beats the one terabyte, three and a half inch drive with 4,600 uh, PC Marks. And then on the third run, you can see it still learns a little bit more, but not too much, and more on this later. Finally, there's the SSD, which yes, it destroys everything with 3,100 uh, PC Marks. Sorry guys used to saying 3D marks. However, in terms of its cost to capacity ratio, it's much, much higher than the hybrid or hard drive based solutions that we're looking at here. Personally, I'm a huge advocate of SSD. If you can afford a large SSD that meets your needs, then great, but not everybody has that option, especially for a secondary machine like a laptop where you might end up using something like a hybrid drive. Now, 
Speaking of using a hybrid drive, let's get into our results for Slick's Momentus XT 500 gig, which, as I mentioned before, he's been using since around the time that this drive launched. On its very first run, his Momentus XT, in spite of being slower, this is like scientifically, indisputably, a slower drive than the new 750 gig drive. It has less cache, slower cache, and it's just older technology all around, less advanced algorithms, all that stuff. It's slower. Scores better than the best score that was posted by the new 750 gig drive. So why is that? because he's been using it for so long that this drive has had so much time to learn just a regular uh, Windows-based operating procedure, and it stored all of that stuff. It kept it, held on to it, and on its very first go, it was able to perform better than the top run with the Momentus XT and the one terabyte drive, but it gets better than that. So it took that sort of core, core data that it had stored, and it even built on it. So after three runs of PC Mark, we actually get over 6,000 PC Marks with the old Momentus XT. So what that means to me is that unlike a purely mechanical hard drive where the deeper you get into use with it, the more fragmented it gets and the slower it performs, with these Momentus XT drives, there should be after you know a year of use where it's got all that data to draw upon to make a very intelligent cache, there should be even more performance to be gained by using the second generation Momentus XT versus what Slick's drive was able to achieve, which is already very impressive and something that I wouldn't have even realized because in my original testing of the Momentus XT, I didn't use it for such an extended period of time. So in conclusion, the Momentus XT delivers in a very small form factor, a tightly integrated solution that has great performance per dollar ratio, a great performance per dollar ratio, and in this tiny little form factor beats the big hard drives, the big boys, the three and a half inch drives, and in terms of price, beats out the SSDs, so it's a pretty darn good solution. Even if, you're, even if you're not using it on a notebook, even if you're using it on a desktop, maybe you want to take a few of them, run them in RAID. The OS doesn't even know it's a hybrid drive. I have a lot of people asking me things like, oh, how do I install a Momentus XT into my system? It's completely invisible. You just install it. So why don't you do that? Just install a Momentus XT. Thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips. And don't forget to subscribe for more reviews and computer videos from your favorite online e-tailer, NCIX.com.